Hello, Laura. Hi. Good evening. Good morning. Good. Yes, good morning for me yes. and good evening for you. Nice to see you. Thank you, you for too. joining my channel. Thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Before we begin, I always ask a set of questions to, for icebreakers. Mm -hmm. If that's okay with you, we shall begin sure. with some icebreakers. Okay. Okay. So it's rather than, so you just have to pick A or B, whatever okay. suits you or whatever comes into your mind simultaneously. Number one, coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> All day, every day. All day, every day. <laughs> Can I ask you how many cups of coffee you drink a day? Uh, probably about eight to 10. Eight to 10, wow. Yeah. Do you put sugar? No, just black coffee. Just we black. make a cold brew at home. Wow, okay. <laughs> All right, number two. Are you a morning person or a night person? So do you do things a lot in the morning or do you do things a lot in, in the night? I am naturally a night person. Um, like if I'm left to my own devices, I would stay up until three or four in the morning and sleep until noon. But because I have to live in society, <laughs> um, I have to be at work at eight. So it's very difficult, but I do it. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Number three. Winter or summer? Winter. Oh, you like winter. Is it snowing like there? Yes. Yes. We just had about a foot of snow yesterday. All right. Okay. <laughs> Number four, do you prefer to eat at home or eat outside? At home. At home. Okay. I, I'm do you spoiled. Like to cook? My husband. No, I don't. I don't cook at all. My husband does all the cooking and he is incredible. Um, at it so he gets up he's a morning person so he wakes up at around 5 30 or 6 and by the time I'm awake my breakfast is made and food for the whole day is made wow <laughs> so what is his specialty um I don't know if he has a specialty he makes all kinds of things but his chili is perfect <laughs> okay yes <laughs> <laughs> number five uh read a book or watch youtube uh neither <laughs> no. I, uh, I actually listen to a lot of books like audiobooks oh okay yeah. so what was what are you listening to now or uh, something that you have recently listened to uh right now i'm gonna look at the title i'm listening to a book called seeing ghosts by cat chow it's a memoir by a local journalist um, I listened to uh, Surviving Autocracy by Masha Gessen, so, you know, a little light listening. <laughs> um, and um, I also recently listened to a book called Machiavelli for Women, oh. uh, which was kind of like a how to negotiate your salary and how to navigate a male-dominated world. <laughs> and so Machiavelli very, it, for Women. Yes, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And... Um, yeah, yeah, I've used a few. I, I don't agree with everything she recommends, but um, but I've used it in a couple of situations and it's been very helpful. So what was one one strong tip that they mentioned to for um, negotiating salary for women? Um, to do your research, to go into the negotiation very well prepared. So um, find out what similar positions are paying and when you're arguing that you need to make more as like, well I've done my research and this is the salary that I should be getting for this position so instead of making it personal like well I deserve it or I need it it's about what the market bears so I thought that was very good advice because oftentimes we don't do that and as women we're kind of socialized to kind of say thank you <laughs> instead of say yeah that's not acceptable <laughs> Great tip, Laura. Thank you. Yeah. Moving on, listen to music while working or no music while working? Low and order while working. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't I, get I that. Usually, low and order. Like I usually have the TV show Law and Order playing in the background while working. <laughs> <laughs> Do you 
work at home? Uh, since the pandemic, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, and I'm hoping to, um, I do go to the office a few times a week, but I'm hoping to never go back full time. <laughs> All right. Because <laughs> you need to have that TV show on. So. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. What's so fascinating about that show? It's so formulaic that you don't really need to pay attention. It's just kind of like in the background. <laughs> it's just All to drown right. out everything else that's going on. You know, I live in the city, so there's a lot of noise. So it's just kind of like to have something to block, you know, sirens and police cars and construction noise. Okay, I, I get it. Yes, I can relate to that. Okay, moving on. Last but not the least, do you like to stay at home or go outside on the weekends? I stay at home. You like yeah. to stay at home. Okay. Yeah, if you had asked me 20 years later, I would have, I would have been going out every night. But you know, now that I'm old, I, I like to stay at home. All right, so 20 years ago, uh, go outside, but now, yeah. no, no. stay at home. Stay at home. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. I had so much fun, Laura. I hope you did. Now let's move on to our main interview. Could you please introduce yourself, your name, sure. your current location, mm -hmm. and what you do to the viewers and anything else that would describe you? Okay. Um, uh, my name is Laura Barcelo. I'm originally from Chile. I live in Indianapolis uh, in the middle of the United States. And I do a few things, actually. Uh, I'm a recovering violinist. <laughs> I, I was a professional violinist uh, for about 15 years. And I, I was good enough to have a lot of work, but not good enough to like, get a job where like, I would make into the orchestra. So I was like a substitute, and I did a lot of recording work. Um, so one day in 2009, I said, I've had it. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going back to school and I got my MBA and um, I own a small business with my husband. Uh, my husband is a violin maker. So we make, repair, sell, rent uh, string instruments. And, but I, my day job, I work for a small advertising agency where I'm the uh, financial controller and HR manager. Kind of. I don't really have like a title, but that's what I do. I manage all the finances and human resources. So wow, yeah. So it, you you mentioned about recovering violinist, right? <laughs> I, I like to say that a little tongue in cheek. You know, it's um, I like it's that. It's funny about being a musician, you know, because you know I've played since I was six years old, and to kind of decide to do something else is difficult. It's kind of like giving up a little bit of your identity. Um, it, was a, it was a difficult decision. I still play sometimes, um, but it's, it's not what I do for a living anymore. And it's really funny because towards the end of my freelancing days, when I was just working all the time, I just wasn't enjoying it at all. And now I, when I do play, I, I do enjoy it. So, so I, it, it almost feels like recovering from something. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So, and is your husband also a violinist? No, no, no. He's a violin yeah. maker. He He's a makes violin violins. maker. Okay. But yeah. He, he makes doesn't repair. play. He plays some, he played cello through high school, but he hasn't really played in 25 years. Um, wow. He plays guitar for fun. He plays with his friends and he takes guitar lessons just kind of to do something different. Um, so. Wow. Laura, if like anyone wants to visit your um, repair shop for violins, mm -hmm. where do we go to? Uh, IndieViolins.com. Uh, Viol sorry, violin. Indie, I-N-D-Y, violins.com. Uh, or you can actually Instagram or Facebook would be easier. It's at IndieViolins, I-N-D-Y-V-I-O-L-I-N-S. So Indie, I-N-D-Y. Correct. Yeah, short for Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Right, Indianapolis, a short form, and then violence, you have the plural form for S. Correct. So it's yep. indieviolence.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our website is terrible. Um, it's just one of those things that we've been so busy that we haven't worried about it. Uh, but if you want to see pictures, uh, we have an Instagram uh, page and Facebook. So Okay, so Instagram indieviolence.com mm. all right i will search yep. for that and if anyone needs repair for violence 
feel if you happen free to be to... in the middle of the USA, we're here for you. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your nice introduction. All right, number moving on. What was the most memorable incident during the Youth Ambassador Program? Oh my gosh, it's been so long. <laughs> Uh, it feels like such a lifetime ago. Um, Sorry, um, but you are 95? Five. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, meeting the president in Taiwan was something that stuck in my memory. Uh, having tea with President Lee, that was pretty cool. Okay. So meeting the president, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how do you think this WVYA program changed your life or is it affecting you in your daily lives? Um, I think it opens up the world, kind of like even watching the news is entirely different because you know people um, and the lifelong friendships. I mean, um, you know, Nahed from Palestine was my roommate in 95 and we still talk, you know, a few times a month. Uh, we just got together like a couple of years ago. Um, I went to South Africa for Ansuya's wedding. I've been to Bosnia to visit Buena. So it's, you know, it's, it's, I think it's the, the connections and the friendships um, are the most life-changing part. Wow. Connection. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, then Laura, how do you seek life's common ground? Um, I don't know. I think my, the main thing is empathy, just trying to see where the other person is coming from. Um, even when we disagree profoundly, <laughs> you know, I mean, like I live in the US and the last few years have been so polarizing and people are, you know, very, very different political views, religious views, just trying to see where the other person is coming from. And sometimes you cannot find that common ground and you have to learn to live with that. Okay. Uh, I like to say we can disagree without being disagreeable. Um, it's a good way to put it. Disagree um, without being disagreeable. Correct. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's quite hard. <laughs> it is very hard, you know, because it is very easy to dismiss somebody who thinks differently uh, from you or who cannot see your point of view, but sometimes you just have to let it be. So just let it be. Did you ever have yeah. any incidents that you had to disagree, but without being disagreeable? Like, what do you do? You uh, just keep your mouth shut or you sometimes don't say... you just have to keep your mouth shut or leave the situation, extract yourself from the situation. Um, okay. It's it's more it's harder to do than to say, but sometimes it's it, it uh, also has to do with your own self preservation. Um, because sometimes the situations can escalate and become dangerous. Um, uh, so just walk away. <laughs> All right, just walk away. Okay. <laughs> All right, Laura, I I, di I didn't quite get how you moved from Chile to mm -hmm. Indianapolis. Uh, I came explain? here for school. I came here for from for school. And uh, after I graduated, I worked for a few years and then I was getting ready to move back and I met my husband and the rest is history. <laughs> so we've been married uh, 17 years, which is really crazy considering that I was 17 when I was in the program. So, <laughs> you know, I've been married longer than I was alive when I was in the program. And uh, that just seems impossible because I don't really feel much more mature than I did then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's better to slow down, you know, for maturity wise. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's better to slow down. And so right after the program, you went back to Chile and then you came Actually, back. Actually, no, I uh, right after the program, I went straight to university. I did my undergraduate in Georgia and I was there for four years. And then I moved to Indiana for my master's in music. And then I ended up staying here. All right. So and I've been your husband here is in American. Yes, he's from uh, Northern Virginia, uh, near Washington, D.C. Um, he's uh, American. Uh, all his grandparents are German, so we're like super different, but somehow it works. Wow. So could you tell us about like the 17 years marriage? I know it's not it's not it's not <laughs> easy, right? It's not easy. Uh, 
two different nationalities um, come together. And so what is the core value or like, what is the tip to be bonded together for such a long time? We have a really good time together. We like, we like to spend time together. We hang, we have a good time. I think that's for us, it's kind of like, we like to say even the bad times are still good. You know, like if you can find humor in, in situations and we don't have children, um, but we do have this business that we run together. So kind of having a common goal and having projects together. Uh, we try to do that a lot. We, um, <laughs> we bought a house, another house last year. We, um, it's an 1875 Victorian little mansion. It's not quite a mansion, but almost that's in terrible shape. So we're restoring that. So we have that project going on now. Um, so I think doing things together, it's, for works for us <laughs> wow hope to yeah. see that house in in a great it's, shape soon yeah we we can't wait <laughs> it's going very slowly um there is a uh, not a lot of uh, workers and not a lot of supplies right now but it, it's moving along wow <laughs> all right so post some pictures up all right when it's all sure. finished yes. yes all right my last question for you is how do you want this global GPA, GPA, the Global Peace Ambassadors Program, to move forward? I'm not quite sure. Um, I have to confess that I haven't been terribly involved in the process, partly because I, you know, I work a lot um, and things have been just hectic. Uh, but I think keeping the connections, and especially for you guys who have children, um, for your children to experience some version of what we went through. Of course, it's such a different world from what it was in the 90s. Um, we couldn't, you know, I mean, like, remember waiting for letters and, <laughs> and phone calls were incredibly expensive. Uh, and now we can do this for almost free. Um, but, uh, but I think that for me, uh, seeing the next generation experience something similar and meeting people who are from a different background, from a different place, um, is it's really life-changing um, and a way to open the world for them. Wow, Laura, before we leave, I remember your husband and you receiving a grand prize. Yes, yes. Could you explain about that, please? Yes, uh, so um, last year, well, it was 2020 now, um, uh, you know, when the pandemic hit, it was like April, 2020, and we we're just looking at each other and you know, the streets were deserted and we we're like not making any money and what are we gonna do? And then there was a program that was financed by Lowe's. Uh, they're a hardware store um, that were giving money to uh, women and minority owned businesses. And since I am both in the US, uh, we got um, a pretty big chunk of money from them. Uh, no strings attached. They're like, here you go, keep your doors open. And that was incredible because um, one of the things that we do, um, you know, like growing up, I played violin and violins are expensive and having access to good instruments is not always easy. So we're trying to make a point to provide that for children and for families who can't afford it. So that allowed us to um, like not charge for some of the people who were renting. It's like, you know, we want your kid to keep playing. Um, don't even worry about it for, you know, three months or six months. Um, so it was kind of like the gift that kept on giving. It was, it was great. It was, it was uh, just a surprise that we didn't expect to get. Wow, so you just gave out violence for complimentary? We, we didn't give them out, but um, we have a lot of uh, students who rent their instruments from us. So like if the parent was out of work, you know, we feel it's not fair that the kid has to give up something they love because of their parents' financial situation. So we're able to provide some scholarships and, and help out that way. So <sighs> that's a miracle. Yeah, that's absolutely. Life -changing. That's life changing. It, it really is. Yes. <laughs> so now wow. that we are restoring the house, you know, we got money from the hardware store. We buy everything from that hardware store, nobody else. <laughs> so it keeps revolving. <laughs> right. So hopefully they'll be able to help another business that's going through tough times. 
And 2020 was very hard for small business. Uh, 2021 was great. We had a very good year. So, but in big part, because we had that financial help when we needed it. Congratulations, <laughs> Laura. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you so much for your time today. Thank and you for I, inviting me. This is so much fun. I hope to see you soon in face. Yes, in Korea, yes. Yes, wherever in in, in, in India or in Korea or maybe somewhere. Rome. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love Rome. <laughs> Ciao have, for now. I have half a million uh, airline miles <laughs> that I can't use and I'm like itching to travel. <laughs> See you in Rome, Laura. <laughs> See you in Rome. Bye. Bye for now. Thank you so much.